Hi, Dominica here from EasySewingForBeginners.com. In this video today, I'll be going through some viewer questions about this FHSM 505 mini sewing machine. Uh, I've had questions about um, which needle size to use, how to change the needle. Also, questions asking if this machine can use different presser feet. Uh, also, if you got this presser foot with your machine, I'll be talking about what it is and how you can use it and also a couple of other questions as well. Okay, so be sure to check out the chapters, skip ahead to anything that's relevant for you, or check out the description box to click on the links and go directly to that part in the video as well. Okay, let's get into it. So let's start with which needle size to go with and how to change the needle on the machine. So I would recommend using a universal size uh, sewing machine needle um, size 9014. Now this is the size that the machine actually comes with and it's a durable needle that will be able to be used for most sewing projects. Okay now if you're not sure of the needle size then if you have a look at the tip of the needle on the rounded side at the top it will actually have the size engraved on there if your eyes are, are good enough to actually be able to see it, mine aren't. Okay, now in terms of actually changing the needle, I'll take you in a little bit closer so you can see that really clearly. So to change the needle on this sewing machine, you want to bring the needle up to its highest position by turning the hand wheel towards you. So I'm pretty sure this one's in the highest position now. So yes, okay, now you have a screw here that's holding the needle in. So I'm just going to take the thread out of the eye of the needle. Okay, and I'm going to loosen that needle bar screw and just need to turn it towards me. And while I'm doing that, I'm holding the needle with my other hand. And once it's loose, just carefully pull the needle down and out, okay, and I'll just grab my new needle. Okay, now on your needle you will notice a rounded edge that has the size engraved on it and you will have a flat edge, okay. Now with this machine you need to make sure that the flat edge is pointing away from you or towards the back of the sewing machine. Okay, now I like to put the needle, you usually have to put it down the hole in the presser foot a little bit to get it up into the needle bar holder. A little bit awkward, I can't see on this angle. There we go. Okay, so I've got the flat edge facing the back. I've pushed it up as far as I can and I'm just going to hold it there with my fingers, my left hand, while the other, my right hand tightens that needle bar or that screw on the needle bar. Okay. All right. So that's tightened as much as I can tighten it and that needle is nice and secure. And then I can thread the needle as usual. Okay. okay, so I've had a lot of people ask whether the presser foot can be changed and what kind of presser feet this machine can use. So the answer is yes, you can change the presser foot and pretty much uh, most snap-on presser feet for low shank sewing machines would fit on this sewing machine but you would need to test it. Um, so any foot that's made for Brother, Janome, um, Kenmore, those types of brands would probably fit on this sewing machine. Okay so to change your presser foot you'll see on the back here that there is a little lever so you'd simply push that lever up and the foot would drop off there. Okay and to put on the uh, next presser foot, just get the threads out of the way. Now that we're in a little bit closer, you can see when I push this lever up, there's a little pin inside the ankle there that moves out and that's what releases 
the presser foot. So that little pin will go on to this part here. We'll go underneath that part there to hold the presser foot in place. So to put the new presser foot on, I'd slide it under the ankle. I just need to lift that needle, that presser foot bar up. And I'll place, place that little bar underneath where that pin will hold it in place. And once I've got it in place, I'm going to, whoops, going to lower the presser foot down. And once it drops down in place, it will grab onto that presser foot and that pin will be holding it on there. Okay, so again, I'm gonna change the presser foot. I'm gonna put this blind hem foot on, which actually comes with my Janome sewing machine. Going to lift that little lever up to release the foot. And then I'm just going to lift that ankle up, position that little bar under the ankle, and put the ankle down so the foot snaps on, and there it's in place. Okay. Okay, so I'll quickly show you how to use the blind hem stitch. So you need to make sure the stitch selection is on number six. So this is your blind hem stitch. So you'd want to make sure you have this type of blind hem foot, which has the uh, movable guide. Um, I'll put a link to one of these on Amazon in the description box down below. But because you don't have the ability to move the position of the needle, you'd want to be able to move the position of the guide. Okay, so your blind hem stitch is for if you're hemming pants and you don't want to see the stitching from the outside. So you just imagine you've turned up your hem and this would be the inside of the fabric. You'd fold it over and then you'd want this folded part to be going along your guide and you'd need to set that in the appropriate position. So I'll show you how this comes out. Okay, so you can see every few stitches it um, takes a stitch to the left. So when you turn your pants right side out, you'll find that you just have one little stitch that you'll see every now and then. And if you use a thread that matches your fabric, you'll hardly see the stitching at all. Okay, so it's a well worthwhile foot to get for your sewing machine. And they probably only cost about six or seven dollars off Amazon. Now I'll link to my video on how to hem pants using the blind hem stitch so you can see the whole process from start to finish. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to do a buttonhole with this machine. Now yours may have come with a foot that looks like this and you may have wondered what it was for. So I'm going to show you how to use that now. So I'm going to remove the foot that's on there now. and snap on the buttonhole foot so first you'll need to work out how big the buttonhole needs to be so uh, grab the button that you're going to be using and I just like to mark on either side and then connect those two points together. I use a friction pen because the colour can be ironed off so you can't see it afterwards. Now the two stitches that do a buttonhole on this machine is stitch 7 and 8. So we're going to start with stitch 8 so you need to put it on to stitch selection number 8. Okay. And I have put the presser foot on, but this top thread is actually on top. So a little trick that I like to do just to get that thread under the presser foot is just use your hand wheel. Oh, I think I'm going to lose my thread. Let's see how it goes. All right, so I've got the hand wheel to go down and back up. And the thread is in the fabric at the moment, so I'm just going to lift the presser foot 
and pull that fabric to the side. And so I have both my ta thread tails underneath the presser foot and off to the side now. Okay, so the next step is to put your fabric under the presser foot and just align the top of your line with those two little red dots at the top of the presser foot in line with the needle. And I'm just going to move the presser foot until the bottom bit is in line with the bottom mark on the buttonhole. And once I've got it in position, I'm going to lower it down. And I've tried to center my line um, in the middle of that spot as best I can. Okay, so stitch number eight is going to do the stitches going side to side. So I'm going to do about... Uh, about that many. Okay, and then I'm going to flick the stitch selection to stitch seven. Okay, now this one will take the needle down and do a zigzag stitch all the way down to the bottom of the buttonhole line. Okay, now you need to flick it back to stitch selection number eight. Okay, now this is the temperamental part. What I like to do is put the needle in the down position. Okay, and I'm gonna lift the presser foot up and swivel my fabric around. I'm gonna move my buttonhole foot down and just put it down into position again. Now what I wanna do is just gently, just lift my needle up and I'm just going to carefully lift my presser foot up slightly and move my buttonhole so that line is centered again. Okay, and I need to switch my stitch selection back to number seven. Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and the presser foot has moved a bit. I'll push that up. All right. And I'm just going to do the hand wheel well, just to make sure it goes down in the correct position. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, if I go down. Okay, and this buttonhole foot will just make sure that it stops in the correct position if you've aligned everything correctly. I'm just going to bring the needle up, pull my fabric out. Okay, and there's my buttonhole. So we've just got one more step. Okay, so for the last step, you'll just need to rip the hole in the middle of the buttonhole. So I just like to grab a pin and put it at the top of the buttonhole so I don't accidentally rip through the stitching that I've just done. Okay, put the seam ripper in. Carefully rip. Top of the buttonhole. I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'll just I think I put the needle down, the pin down a bit too far. Okay, and then I'll just test my buttonhole. All right, and there I have it. Buttonhole made with this mini sewing machine. It's not a perfect buttonhole, but um, it does the job. Now someone has asked if this machine fits a walking foot and unfortunately it doesn't. Uh, so those of you who aren't familiar with a walking foot, it looks like this and basically has feed dogs at the top and as the needle bar moves up, the feed dogs push the top fabric through as well. Um, but it just doesn't fit onto this part. It just isn't big enough to accommodate for this size walking foot, unfortunately. 
I hope I've managed to answer a few of your questions about this machine. Uh, if you have any other questions that I haven't answered, then leave them in the comments down below. Leave a thumbs up if you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get notifications on all my upcoming videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.